calendar. We're going to go ahead and start the meeting officially, but we're going to wait for my other colleagues to get here before we jump into the agenda or public comment. So um, keep the noise levels down to a minimum because you will be disrupting the meeting. We are officially in session on the committee meeting, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, and just wait for the others to get here to get started. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Mr. Herman, I'm going to ask you once, if you're going to sing out in this meeting and you're going to disrupt the meeting, we have started the meeting, then I'm going to ask you to leave. Understood. Thank you so much. Good morning. Appreciate it.
I'll go ahead and start on item two with uh, Mr. Tifank, if I could. Good morning, Council President. Uh, Richard Tifank, Executive Director of the Board of Police Commissioners. I'm joined by Kelly Johansson, uh, Deputy City Attorney. There is an error in the um, ordinance, which we have a, a substitute uh, ordinance to present to the committee. The uh, actual uh, increase in the um, fee should be a false alarm is going from $186 to $189. A charitable information card is going from $42 to $46. A press pass from $28 to $30. And a noise variance from $252 to $322. These fees were all approved as part of the report that came through Council in January of 2016. However, these four fees were not captured in the original ordinance. So this is to bring them up to, to date. Be happy to answer any additional questions if you have any, sir. Okay, got it. Um, and those have been submitted? Yes, sir. Okay. You have the ordinance? Yes. The city attorney has it with him. Would you like me to give it to you, Deborah? Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and... Uh, approve it as a communication from the chair. Uh, we actually have one card on that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hold it on the desk for, uh, for cards until we get other members in a quorum. Very good, we'll sir. We'll the public comment, and then we'll go ahead and vote on it at that point. Right. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Thank you so much. Good morning, Mr. O'Farrell. Welcome back. Uh, so we're waiting on one more member um, before we start running through the actual agenda.
All right, Mr. Busaino, thank you so much for being here as well. Um, and, and thanks for the uh, notification early on this morning that you, in fact, would be uh, uh, running late. So we appreciate that. And we're going to go ahead and uh, finish up going through the agenda now. Um, we do have cards on a number of items. Uh, the speakers will stick to the items specifically or be asked to forfeit the remaining balance of all of their time. Um, including general public comment. If they don't follow the rules, they know the rules. It's the same speakers that speak at every committee and council meeting, so we know full well that we repeat these rules, and in fact, every time. So with that, um, we've got a minute on each item, um, including general public comment. And um, uh, Armando Herman, if you want to come on up on items that you filled out a card on, you filled out a card on every single item on the agenda. Uh, so stick to the items. Uh, you've got a minute on each item, a maximum of... Mr. Speaker, I'm going to maximum of put my minutes. time under general public comment. You can't move all your... your you have one minute on general public comment. So you're you speaking on... I can speak in general public comment, correct? For one minute. One minute. All right. One minute then. How far is the nigger going to go? Yeah, this is what we are going to do to the niggers. A dirty nigger like you, Englander, send the Jews back to Israel. So, excuse me, put Let's this, give hold this, hold this time, Mr. Herman. Hold Brandon hold Burke versus hold Ohio, I'm speaking on general public comment. No, okay. I'm going to repeat the rules again. It has to be under the purview of this committee in which you're not speaking. To it the has purview to under this safety, committee. Sir. So, that's not what you're speaking on. You're speaking and it's not to the purview of this committee. And therefore, you're disrupting the meeting. So if you can continue speaking on things that are not under the purview of the Public Safety Committee meeting, then you'll be asked um, to forfeit your time. And that's the last time that I'm going to give you the warning for this meeting. U.S. So Court 395-444-1969, reported in the L.A. Times of California, California section July 23rd, and it states, during a public comment period, Herman spoke on the intent to bury people whom he referred to using racial epithet. Bakewell, the asshole, questioned whether those remarks were an invitation to kill and said LAPD should look into them. If it doesn't, what could happen? It needs to be properly investigated. So my public safety is at threat by all of you, the LAPD, who threatened Wayne Spindler under issues of protected speech, First Amendment, 14th Amendment, 42 U.S.C., 1983, asshole. Now going on to uh, public comment on other items. Now, I'd like to thank uh, the communication from the mayor. As we all know that today we have a new ethics commissioner who I just shook hands with, Ms. Cynthia McLean Hill. As I know, she will keep law and order and protect the civil rights of African Americans from such racist attacks by such people under the so-called Englander, Kanabi, and Allen firm, the lobbies on behalf of clients at City Hall and elsewhere. Because you all heard, people are being killed. First, African Americans. And to all the other population, how many bullets can you waste when you can take one person down, one shot? Hoorah! Shout out to the Marines and Army. Now going into item number two, as Mr. T. Fank brought out this morning without a quorum, that the city returns report ordinance wrong up to the amending of section 4140-4404-5216 due to technical grammatical error. Do your research, do your homework. The same way Wayne Spindler did his homework. He stuck to the First Amendment issue on a public comment card. Now going on to item 666, as reported on my card. City Attorney report the ordinance relative to amending section 103205 of the Division 8, Article 3, Chapter 4 of the Los Angeles Municipal Code, regulating insurance police permits mis Massage business. Well, let me tell you about massage business. It's a dirty way to traffic children. It's a dirty way for politicians to fuck with children. 
It's a dirty way to allow this to happen. This matter is concerning the constitutionality and content to protect citizens from such massage parlors. Our First Amendment to participate and demand public demonstration against such items. Item 6. Now, what was the other item you want me to speak on, sir? Whatever you filled the cards out for. Okay, let me go back to the child and me on item 13. I like 13, because that's where I grew up, in Boyle Heights 13, homeboy. Now, I'm going to teach you thugs about homeboys from 13. Orale pues, Holmes, a police commission report. The Los Angeles Police Foundation valued at $23,520 for the benefit of the L.A. Police Department for 40 iPads. 40 fucking iPads. How many police do we have on staff? We need all police to have an iPad. What's wrong with you, dumbass? What's wrong with you? Physical impact statement submitted? None. Physical impact statement submitted by community impact statement and report? None. What a jerk. Now, let me go to my final 55 seconds, Mr. Dwarf, as brought out in the Daily News. Paper, 21, because I like to play with three cards. Board of Police Commissioners and City Administrative Officers report relative to the reappointment of funds. Urban Area Security. We don't need no more funds for urban security. You've been killing African Americans. See, that's why we have a police commission across the street that protects the citizens' rights under 42 U.S.C. 1983, Michael Hunt versus the city of Los Angeles, Whitney versus the state of California, and Dennis the Menace who fucks the USA. There you go. Time up, jackass. All right, thank you very much. Um, we are on all the items, and we've asked for all. Are there any other cards submitted on any other items? I've got some from Eric Previn, and that's it. So we'll close then the submission for cards on all the items. Um, and then we'll turn it over to Eric Previn on items 1, 2, 8, and 16. Uh, good morning, uh, morning. Councilmember Englander. Uh, Welcome back to the city council members uh, attending, which include O'Farrell, Buscaino, and Mr. Bonnet and yourself. I, I don't see Martinez, but I'm sure she'll, she'll make her way up. Uh, thank you for this agenda. Uh, I'd like to say congratulations and welcome to Cynthia McLean Hill to the Board of Police Commissioners. It's my understanding that she's replacing Mr. Saltzman, who was one of the longtime members and an important voice on the commission. And so she's filling some big shoes. Uh, he was one of the guys who occasionally would dissent. So. Uh, you know, that's dissent is patriotic, as we all know. And uh, it's important to uh, serve in the capacity that I think she's well trained for. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to her tenure. And I hope that she uh, continues to provide scrutiny where that commission is intended to do so. Um, Saltzman was uh, a critic of the policies regarding body cams, as you recall. And we still have to get that squared away and will. I'll address that in my little bit of public comment. Uh, item number two is the uh, municipal code is being adjusted to increase some fees. I took a quick look. Uh, fascinating. It's there are about three, 200 soap categories where the city does assign various fees. Uh, as you can imagine, the one that drives the biggest amount of revenue is the alarms. And that one, uh, we will be in, seeing no increase in revenue from 2015-16 to 2016-17. But I think these uh, changes, and many changes, uh, we will be... Uh, increasing fees across the board on the order of about 15, 13, 12 percent, it looks like, uh, to the tune of several million dollars more revenue. So hopefully that, that uh, will be put to good use. I may have that wrong. It may be only 400 and something thousand more revenue, but it was a little confusing. There were multiple reports, and good job at cataloging it so many different ways. Uh, item number eight will signify my interest in items number seven through 15. I'll just speak about eight, which is a donation. And you know, we often, through the Police Foundation, receive donations, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. From every little village in America, there's the Police Benevolent Association, these great little organizations that help and then get things going. Um, it's one thing that I'm a little bit of a stickler on is understanding from whom the donation is coming. I think that's important. And all of these, each and every one is accompanied by a statement that says, 
uh, thank you and don't worry, the person has no connection to any uh, police business of any kind. But that is like a weird over there kind of a comment. I think a much better way to go is simply to identify the person. Like, for example, Jeffrey New, N-E-U, is a guy who lives in Manhattan Beach, and he decided to give $25,000 uh, for, I think it's number eight, I think it's for the... To, pay for some consulting that will be provided by Stephen R. Jacobs, who's obviously a respected consultant. But there's just a lot. The one on this agenda today adds up to about $354,000 in donations from people, and you can only sort of see from whom. I think it's important that we see from whom. We hold many of our partners to a very high standard, like Taser and like Motorola and all these companies that are forced and, in fact, required to sort of announce that they're giving us a trial run on something or making a donation. We should do it for everybody so that everybody has to be uh, treated fairly in that regard. Um, the item number 16 uh, was on my radar uh, because it is, of course, Clear Channel, and we have to say thank you. Here they are providing some billboards. We have to be vigilant here, actually, because as the, many, as the council members all know, as they shift a little bit, uh, billboard companies are also very helpful during campaigns. So we have, to, we have to police the line. Everybody understands that these are important tools to bring out messages. Uh, I remember for uh, the abducted children. This one, I believe, is specific to... Um, well, it doesn't say on the agenda, but it is, uh, it is helpful, and I did look at it, and it is inside the, the, the purview of what we want. And so in my conclusion, I'm just going to say in public comment, if I may, um, you know, I wrote a City Watch article about body cams, and the point I was trying to make was we should be di diligent and careful in the selection of these uh, items, and we should be uh, fair and open and transparent in the way that we enforce policies and create policies about them. And I asked that the chief of police back in the... Uh, Sheriff McDonald uh, partner up and come up with the DA with the one set of policies. Because think of how confusing it would be if you get arrested by one set of folks or you get arrested by another set of folks and you have different rules about the, the way the footage is used. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The other thing that I think this body has to take a good, strong look at, and you don't need to worry about your long relationship with Taser because Taser makes two different products or more, but the chest cams, which I think we've gone long in that direction, uh, have come to my attention as being problematic. And I've, uh, I've seen some examples of it. I wrote about it. Uh, we want to protect uh, the law enforcement officers who are uh, going to be covered with these cameras. Who are, when I say covered, I mean who are going to be providing images and footage. So it's absolutely critical that, that we have functional equipment. And I know that everybody has looked hard at these things, but the uh, Office of the Inspector General over at Los Angeles County, a comparable large law enforcement, found that there were problems with chest mounts. So I would just ask that before you move forward, before the mayor kicks this one over the hoop or through the arches, whatever, uh, that you look closely at that. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes all the cards I believe we have for all the items and general public comment. All the other cards that may have come in were after we started the agenda and asked for all the cards to be submitted. So we'll go ahead and file those. Now we can turn our attention to the agenda. We heard item two uh, already, and we had technical changes from Mr. T. Fink on item two. So we'll ask for the following agenda items to be on consent. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Um, so move. So move. All right, that'll be the order without objection. Those items are approved, and we'll go ahead and hear item one. And if we can ask um, Ms. Cynthia McLean Hill to come on up. Item one is the communication from the Mayor and City Ethics Commission rel um, relative to the appointment of Ms. Cynthia McLean Hill to the Board of Police Commissioners for the term ending. June 30th, 2021. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your patience this morning. Appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And I would like to also welcome uh, Councilwoman Nuri Martinez as well. Good morning. Before you get started, I just want to say that um, I have been uh, a longtime fan and admirer of your work and uh, your commitment to so many things that you've done, not just here in Los Angeles, um, but throughout the state of California. And your commitment to public service has been remarkable. Uh, what you've done with NABO, what you've done with so many different organizations, with the FPPC, you bring so many different aspects, experience and history, education, 
um, knowledge and and um, I was an honor to sit down with you actually yesterday and go through some of your thoughts and ideas and particularly where we're at right now with not just the department itself but the challenges we face as a society and that ever-changing um, sort of grasp of what we do as a society and treat each other. So uh, your insight, ideas, and thoughts were very welcome. And I uh, just want to thank you so much for not only the opportunity to come before us and, and uh, dedicate the time and energy and effort and frustration that we know is all coming <laughs> forth with this appointment, um, challenges and opportunities, uh, but also um, your commitment to the people of Los Angeles, uh, to the department, to the officers, to the citizens, to the extraordinary uh, challenges that we have before us and your vision. I want to thank you for that uh, because it's needed desperately at such a great time. So with that, I want to open it up to your ideas and thoughts and uh, any opening statement you might have. Thank you. Well, thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. I um, you know, I do understand that my appointment to the commission comes at a at an interesting time in the history of the city. And I want to start by um, acknowledging my deep appreciation for for the mayor and um, for his um, faith and trust demonstrated by his nomination of me to serve in this capacity. I uh, very much appreciate this opportunity to speak to all of you and have enjoyed meeting for the first time a number of you. This is a city that I absolutely love, um, so much so that my 30-year-old daughter who's here with me is a second generation Angelino because I got on a plane a week before she was due, flew from Washington DC to make sure. This is, um, what I love about Los Angeles is its diversity and its capacity to blaze a bright light toward people figuring things out and moving forward. Uh, I've been here long enough to have witnessed significant breakdowns in the civic fabric of this city, but I also was here and participated in our pulling it back together, and among the things that we all should be incredibly proud of is the way in which we rose to the occasion as a community both private citizens, public officials, and um, people all across the city and at every demographic level to create the institutions that we now have. Strengthening the police commission, creating um, you know, term limits for the police chief, uh, and charter changes that moved us forward. We have a tremendously effective police department. We also have communities that are in crisis around community police relationships. And I am privileged to have, if I'm confirmed today, <laughs> the opportunity to contribute to some reconciliation and some additional progress or movement forward. We've got tremendous challenges, but we've made great progress and we do have the capacity to rise to the occasion. This is. Um, to your point about my service, this is something that is critically important to me as a first-generation um, college graduate. Uh, I believe that I've been given great opportunities based on the work of people, both anonymous and famous, um, private citizens, and you know, high elected officials. And so I consider my public services just doing my part to keep the ball rolling forward. So thank you. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I'd like to open it up to my colleagues and, and just uh, let them know as well, we're gonna, we have a holding place on council today uh, and hopefully we'll have a full dialogue with the entire body as well. But I wanna certainly turn it over to, uh, to all of you. Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be very brief because 
I had the great pleasure of sitting down for a good little while yesterday with Ms. McLean Hill, and so, uh, I am so impressed, and uh, I feel very optimistic about your appointment, and uh, I think you'll, you have such experience, and um, the, I don't know, the intuitive um, ability to just see through all of the noise and get right to the heart of the matter on these important issues that are facing the police commission and the LAPD today. And um, I think you're exactly the presence that is needed on that commission. And I'm uh, very, you know, very impressed with you and, and grateful for your willingness to step up and serve again after you've served on countless commissions over the years. Uh, I said yesterday to you that um, I think that that's exactly that, that experience, uh, that the ability to have someone who is so incredibly seasoned on this commission at this time uh, is, is going to um, add great value uh, to the police commission. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with your appointment. And I look very forward to working with you and assisting you in any way I possibly can uh, to move these issues along. Uh, I think you're going to be very effective. So congratulations and, and thank you for serving uh, in this capacity. Um, uh, I, feel, I feel very good about the future of the police commission with you being on it. Thank you, so, Council. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I too, um, I'm encouraged and am excited about this appointment and had the opportunity to meet. It seems like you made your rounds the <laughs> on, the, on this panel. Um, thank you for taking on this role and, this, and it's a huge responsibility, this awesome responsibility to lead our uh, police department. And, you know, when you mentioned that there, there are some challenges in relationship-based policing, you have the relationships already on the ground today. Uh, you do not have to go out and and um, seek uh, relationship building throughout the city of Los Angeles, and that's why I'm, I'm really comfortable about moving forward on, on this appointment. Um, we, uh, we spoke in depth about uh, police community relationships, uh, not only here in the city of Los Angeles, but uh, beyond the city and, and issues facing this country today. Um, I, I want to hear from you know, your thoughts on finding ways and ideas to improve community um, police relations uh, moving forward and uh, taking on this role as a police commissioner? Um, the answer to that question always sounds like motherhood and apple pie. It um, really fundamentally comes down to authentic <laughs> relationship building between community and, um, and, and law enforcement. Um, and I say it sounds like motherhood and apple pie and would seem a little far-fetched except that, um, Councilman, as you know, we have a tremendous example of that in your district. Mm -hmm. um, the Watts Gang Task Force has been meeting for a very long time and it serves as a really powerful example of what can be accomplished yeah. if you have both committed parties on both sides. Um, the engagement of the elected representatives and um, and the courage to listen. Right. Um, the difficulty we have is not in knowing what works, it's figuring out how to scale what works. So as a commissioner, I'm looking forward to getting to know um, that particular effort a whole lot better and understanding <laughs> Uh, really how that can be replicated both around the city and I think it serves as a tremendous model for what can happen nationwide where we see breakdowns. Fundamentally what we see is a, a real absence of trust and you can't have trust if you don't start with authentic, sincere and sustained communication even when it gets tough for people to do that. Appreciate that and lastly if, if I may, um, you know, you will be a change agent. You will be seeking policy changes uh, within the police department as a police commissioner. Um, 
in my years with the LAPD, oftentimes I'll scratch my head sitting in roll call. Um, there are other times that I embraced uh, some of the changes that came to the, the beat cop work in the streets. And um, uh, Give me your, your, your perspective of the, um, how do you plan on getting officers' perspectives, um, those officers who are working the streets who will be implementing commission policies in, in real world scenarios? We had a long talk about this yesterday. Yeah. I'm sorry. We had the same discussion. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, I have to tell you, the, the question about how, as we were talking yesterday, I made a note that I would be uh, looking to both you and um, to uh, Councilman Englander to be of some assistance in helping to forge the kind of trust that allows for that to happen. As a commissioner, you immediately get a wall sometimes that makes... <laughs> honest dialogue tough, so you need intermediaries to help you make that happen. Um, in terms of the value that I place on that kind of input, very, very, very high. Um, you know, I'm not that far from, um, you know, my parents were working class and my dad was, ne was Navy and uh, entered the Navy as an enlisted guy who rose to the rank of chief petty officer, but you know, it was always really clear to me that there are people who actually do stuff and people who uh, sort of are trained but have never really done it from the ground up. And it's, you know, vitally important to understand how policy works as applied, not just policy. So I'm looking forward, frankly, to that aspect of my service as a commissioner. Thank you so much for taking on this role and this awesome responsibility. Looking forward to working with you, and I, I am really strongly um, support the mayor's recommendation in in in, in this uh, commission appointment, and look forward to work with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I should apologize that we haven't had an opportunity to sit down one on one. I look forward to doing so. Um, your reputation, though, precedes you. Uh, Having served on the Coastal Commission, uh, having survived serving on the Coastal Commission, uh, tells me that uh, you're probably well suited to survive a, a police commission meeting. Uh, I'm familiar with your work on the Coastal Commission through my work representing the coast and, and, and working for coastal communities for a couple decades now. So I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for your willingness to uh, serve on this commission. Uh, we've talked a little bit uh, in this meeting about... Um, police community relations, people who are angry with LAPD or have a bad relationship with the department and how we can change that. We've talked a little bit about um, how you can get a better perspective of from the officers about how they feel about the department. But I wanted to, to, to talk about sort of a, a, a third leg of the stool and that's um, how uh, residents of the city who are seeking help or services from LAPD feel about the department. Um, and I'm just, just curious, uh, have you had an occasion to, to have to call LAPD for, for service or for help for anything? No. The, the, the reason I bring it up is not a week goes by uh, that, that I don't personally hear, and probably not a day goes by that my staff doesn't hear, um, that they have a hard time getting LAPD to respond. Uh, that for a non-emergency call, you can't get a live person on the phone. Uh, for uh, uh, calls for service, uh, they take too long. Sometimes a 911 call takes too long. Uh, and I get those complaints on a regular, regular basis. And um, I'd, I'd ask um, for you to try to pay some attention to that issue on, on the commission. Uh, one of the things that I think hurts our community of policing approach is that we don't have enough officers on patrol. Uh, and I think folks from the, the police union will tell you that. Uh, I think uh, some of our captains confidentially will tell you that. Um, constituents, the CPAB folks will certainly tell you that. Um, the department has, has not put a priority on patrol. And so we don't have enough officers in our neighborhoods building relationships with community and actually being proactive about some of the crime. So that's sort of an important issue for me and is just one I want to sort of uh, put on your radar screen as well. 
Um, thank you for that. I, I will tell you that while I've not had the experience of uh, reaching out to uh, the police department for assistance, I have had the experience of reaching out to the fire department in, um, you know, in an extreme emergency. And so I'm very clear about what it means to be a frantic um, citizen on the other end of the line and uh, how much every single second matters. Uh, so I, uh, I appreciate your concern and will certainly uh, make some inquiries into that particular area. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I also haven't had the opportunity to um, meet you personally, but I feel like I've read everything about you. I used to run an environmental nonprofit, so you work on Cal EPA, the justice, um, the Environmental Justice Working Group. I'm very familiar with your work and appreciate your perspective on that. Um, I, I have a, a, a similar concern as Mr. Bonin in terms of the response um, um, when we call the department. I represent the San Fernando Valley, so, so to us, the cop, the police department isn't the bad guys. Um, I, I have to tell you, I'm gonna be very honest. Even though we, Rodney King occurred um, in the valley, we had very little disturbances after that incident. And every time we've put together a public safety forum of any kind in the Valley, you will see the response from the community in terms of the support that they have for, for the department. And my question is, um, what, do you, what are some of your ideas um, to try and strengthen the trust between the community and the department. I see it all around the city, although it doesn't impact my district directly because we haven't had instances like the ones you see in other parts of the city. But it does worry me that somehow this is gonna spill over to parts of my district in terms of what you're constantly seeing over and over again, which is community frustrated and issues of, um, of trust with the department. Like I said, these are not, these are not things that are um, that occurred in my district, but I do sense that people's frustrations might spill over to other parts of the city. Do you have any um, ideas of how we can better strengthen the communication between the community and the department? Um, I do, and I think that the police commission has an important role to play since, as designed, we are the citizen oversight and in many ways, the community representative to the police department. We should be effective bridges and intermediaries. Um, it is um, interesting. I mean, social media is, a, is an amazing thing, and video cameras on telephones uh, you know, provide countless hours of entertainment and engagement, but it is also nationalized in many ways, instances of, of bad policing. Um, and so whether it happened in LA or it happened in Baton Rouge, people have instant access to incidents that become terrifying. I believe that it's important that we acknowledge both the concern and the, and the, the sense of urgency that people in certain communities feel about the uh, feel about the problems associated with bad policing. I don't think that we've done a good job of, allow, of causing people to feel like they're heard. It concerns me that so many people across the city who are in a position to know are, share your sense of anxiety about something spilling over or something flying out of control. And so from my perspective, an urgent and immediate um, activity on my part would, begin to, would be to begin to reach out, to start to listen, to try to facilitate much better communication uh, between both the commission, the community, and law enforcement to the extent that that's possible. So for me, I, Mr. Chair, I'd like to work on a couple of things. I don't know how this, committee could, could go about doing that, but continuing to facilitate the type of dialogue that you're describing is important to me. As a woman of color, I completely get it, um, but I'm also held at a different standard than most people because not only am I a woman, but I'm Latina. And so when people come with their anxiety and their fear for the department, 
um, I can't help but to try to understand what that's like. But on the other hand, I also grew up with a lot of uh, young men and women who are part of the department. Who, there's an, an, at any time of the day, I can walk into any police station in the Valley and recognize somebody I went to high school with. Mm. And so to me, that is not only, not only does that make me proud, but it also makes me feel like the department's come a very long way. And so we also need to address the fact that the department, diversity-wide, I think we've done a terrific job. Hiring more women, I think we're an example. Uh, and we're leading by example. I think that the fire department is trying to figure out how to do that uh, within their own ranks. So I'm very proud of that. So I'm constantly trying to figure out how to balance that. And then at the end of the day, I, I agree with Mr. Bonin. What my residents want to see is that when they call 911, that there is someone at the door in a timely manner, that people don't feel like they're fending for themselves. Are they going to show up? Are they not going to show up? You know, you're kind of sort of out there wondering, you know, somebody broke into your house. It might not, somebody might not be dead, but to, to someone, that's a big deal. Um, and so to me, I'm constantly trying to figure out a way to, what is my role in all this, to try to not only listen to that person who um, wants to see more police officers in our community, um, as well as that person who fears that if something gets out of control, that, that I'm going to hold folks accountable. So I would like to figure out a way to do that and continue our dialogues. We had a very productive dialogue last year with the chief who came out um, to Van Nuys and we had about 500 people show up. Nothing, no one was out of hand, nothing happened. Everybody was orderly, things were all about how do we get more police officers in our streets. And that's the kind of dialogue that I'm very proud that my constituents lead, and I want to continue to see that in other parts of the city and not fester on all this other stuff that we see um, occur, and how do we make sure we handle that and hear people out and take control over those situations. Well, I look forward to working with you on that, so thank you. All right. Um, thank you for that. And. Um, I think that's, I was going to save this for council, but I'm, I, I think it's appropriate to share uh, based on um, Nuri's remarks and, and Mike's and all of us, I think, share the same feeling. Your appointment to this commission is by far one of the most important votes we can cast as elected officials. The most important thing we do in local government is public safety, is oversee police and fire. But keeping the city safe is the cornerstone of what we do. It's the balance of society. Uh, and the fact that we have a privilege and an opportunity to have a citizen's oversight commission in the way that this structure has been created, many other municipalities thrive and strive to achieve that and haven't been able to figure it out. They've passed that policy in the county and still can't get it together and figure out how to implement and are getting caught in the weeds over so many different nuances of putting it together. We have that ability and we're selecting an individual who is unique um, and special, who has an opportunity to sit on that phenomenal incredible organization that oversees, as a citizen, our police powers in the city. Uh, that's an extraordinary opportunity for us to vote and select and support the mayor's decision. And it doesn't come lightly. And I think you heard from all of us that we're ecstatic, um, but also challenged. Uh, and so with that, it is a great honor as the chair of this committee to say that I believe it's unanimous that we support your recommendation uh, and move you on from this committee to the full city council today to be our next police commissioner to oversee the Los Angeles Police Department. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. With that, uh, I believe that that concludes the agenda. Do we have anything else before us? Would you like to reconsider the item now, um, all items now that um, all the members are present? Yes, certainly. We'll go ahead and do that. All items for reconsideration with the amended uh, changes, technical amendments, CAO reports, uh, attachments thereto, et cetera.
And a clarification for items 20 and 21, those reports from the mayor, now um, reports from the Board of Police And the clarifications. Yes, um, those items are all approved uh, and uh, with no, without objection, uh, unanimously, those would be the order. Great. Thank you so much. We are adjourned. Thank you.